Hello and thanks for joining us on this Thursday afternoon. I'm Journey Taylor and here are some of the headlines we're following today. State legislators are still in session and big changes could be on the horizon for Arkansas families. The latest from the state capitol in less than two minutes. Plus in our verify segment at 1217, we answer a question about paramedics and whether black Americans were the first in the country. But is that true? Channing Curtis breaks it all down. And calling all Richardson fans, you are finally getting the story we've always wanted to see. Just ahead in entertainment news, we'll share what we now know about the Bridgerton prequel and which character is coming to the forefront. But finally, we are getting a little peace and quiet after a noisy and rainy night. Meteorologist Nathan Scott is here. And Nathan, you stayed up pretty late tracking that weather, huh? Oh, good afternoon, Journey. <laughs> yeah, it was a late night watching the radar very closely. We did have some storms that did potentially produce some tornadoes into north central Arkansas. This is also associated with the cold front. That cold front has made its way through central Arkansas and now in east Arkansas. And look at the temperatures. They have been dropping. So when you woke up this morning, it still felt like summertime before those storms arrived. And then once the storms moved through, down the temperatures went. It's 49 in Little Rock, 52 in Stuttgart, 65 in Monticello. But you will also see your numbers drop down to the 50s very quickly. Only 32 right now in Fayetteville. And here's a look at the winds because they are on the gusty side side from the north northwest about 10 to 20 miles per hour. So it feels like only 23 right now in Fayetteville and it feels like 43 in the capital city. So you may need to grab that jacket or even a coat. National Weather Service has gone out, done a survey in northwestern parts of Searcy County, and they did find EF1 damage right around the community of Pendle. And there's also some other damage possibly that was related to a tornado into western parts of Newton County and even into southern parts of Marion County. I'll have more on what you can expect through the rest of the day and weekend forecasts coming up. Well, now to a developing story from Northwest Arkansas. An investigation is underway right now after a Springdale police officer fired shots at who officials say was an armed suspect. Both the officers in the suspect were injured after chasing the suspect. The person is accused of pulling a handgun after a brief conversation with officers before running from the area. And in Izzard County, the sheriff's office is mourning the loss of one of their own this afternoon. Deputy Sean Hunt was killed in an off duty car accident early this morning. According to the sheriff's office, he went to work for the county in August of 2021. His colleagues called him a loving co worker, father, fiance, and friend. Happening now, the state Senate is taking a look at the controversial so-called bathroom bill. House Bill 1156 would impact transgender children in Arkansas. It's a step closer to becoming law after clearing the Senate Education Committee. The bill's co-sponsor, State Senator Dan Sullivan of Jonesboro, maintains that the proposal protects all students, but debates over trans rights and parents' rights have been very contentious lately. Opposition in yesterday's committee meeting came from several speakers and the Senate Democratic Minority Leader claims the bill does more harm than good. The message I think is, is pretty clear that boys should go to boys bathrooms and girls go to girls bathrooms based upon your um, sex at birth. The bill includes penalties for school district administrators who don't comply with this and yet we're not telling them how to enforce this piece of controversial legislation. That bill also limits where transgender students can sleep on school trips. However, in the packed committee meeting yesterday, many focused on the bathroom aspect. If the bill were to pass, fines at a minimum of $1,000 would be issued for those who refuse to enforce it. We will bring you any updates right here on THV 11 after today's full Senate session. Another big talker this afternoon is Governor Sarah, uh, Sarah Sanders pushed to require people on Medicaid to return to work. The governor announced she will ask federal officials for special approval to implement the change. According to the governor, there are 300,000 able body adults who receive Medicaid assistance through Arkansas's AR home program. And that's what she sees as the issue. Sanders is pushing to require AR home recipients to work, go to school or volunteer to quote, contribute to their community in some meaningful way. 
Now, this is a second attempt after a federal judge struck down work requirements back in 2019. Sanders says this time it's different, claiming this program will get more people to work without completely kicking them off Medicaid. Medicaid recipients who choose not to participate in this program will not lose coverage and will simply revert back to traditional fee for service coverage. By making this innovation, we are complying with past court rulings and ensuring our plan can actually go into effect while still maintaining the same goal, which is moving Arkansas from government dependency to prosperity. Former Governor Asa Hutchison's proposal led to thousands of people falling off Medicaid rolls. This time, people would move from so-called private option plans, like those from Blue Cross, to basic Medicaid reimbursements. The Democratic Party has responded to the governor's announcement, calling the plan a waste of time. The federal government will decide after getting the waiver request this summer. Also at the Capitol, an Arkansas representative is still working to give Second Amendment rights to convicted felons. Last week, Democratic Representative Vivian Flowers introduced House Bill 1013. If passed, it would restore someone with a nonviolent felony the right to own a gun after 10 years have passed since they've completed their sentence. This is something that restores rights that some people don't even believe um, should have been taken. Representative Flowers is planning to bring this bill back to the House Committee at the end of the month or at the beginning of March. Now we are learning more this afternoon about the mass shooting at Michigan State University Monday. Three students were killed and five others remain in critical condition. Erica Mokay has the latest from East Lansing. Michigan State University police gave an update Thursday on the investigation into Monday's mass shooting on campus, including new details about the shooter, 43-year-old Anthony McRae. We can confirm that the shooter had two handguns on his person when he was located, and we have learned that they were purchased legally by the shooter, but they were not registered. You're under arrest. Newly released police body cam video shows McRae's previous arrest on a gun charge in 2019. For that case, that weapon is still in Lansing Police Department custody. As students retrieve items they left behind when they ran for their lives during the attack, many say they're still traumatized. I've just been replaying the events over and over again in my head hearing the shots. Classes are set to resume next week, but many say they're terrified to return in person. A student-led petition to hold classes online has gathered more than 10,000 signatures, though anyone is able to sign. Each member of our campus will have different needs and our focus is on providing as much flexibility as possible. The shooting killed three students and injured a handful of others, including junior Guadalupe Wapia Perez. Congratulations, graduates of the class of 2020. A family statement on a GoFundMe page says the process for a full recovery will take months. Erica Moke, CBS News, East Lansing, Michigan. And while Michigan authorities are searching for the why in the MSU shooting, another mass shooting has happened in America, this time in the food court of a mall in El Paso, Texas. And as you can see in this video here on your screen, gunfire sent people scrambling for safety. One person is dead and three wounded victims are in local hospitals. The Cielo Vista Mall, where this happened, is a very close to a Walmart where 23 people were killed and another mass shooting back in 2019. Today, authorities are confident they found the people responsible. We have two in custody. There is no more danger to the public. The local FBI office is assisting El Paso police in this investigation. And the man who killed 10 black people at a supermarket in Buffalo, New York last year was sentenced to life in prison. The hearing was interrupted when someone lunged at the gunman, Peyton Gridon. Grid, Gridon still faces federal charges for this racially motivated attack last May. He apologized to the victims and their families for the shooting. And after a seven month investigation, the nation is finally seeing the intro and conclusion of a report on former President Donald Trump and his allies' efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 election. The development comes as Trump once again seeks the Republican Party's presidential nomination. Nicole D'Antonio reports from the White House. 
On Thursday, Fulton County Superior Court Judge Robert McBurney in Georgia issued part of a grand jury report about efforts by former President Trump and his allies to overturn Georgia's 2020 election results. As I said early on, um, there'll be no rash decisions. There's not going to be an order that pops out. The investigation was first sparked by an hour long phone call in January 2021. During that conversation, Trump asked Georgia Secretary of State Republican Brad Raffensperger to find the votes he needed to win Georgia. Look, Brad, I got to get I have to find 12,000 votes and I have them. The grand jury looked into efforts by Trump allies to pressure Fulton County election workers to falsely admit to tampering. Among them, Ruby Freeman, who testified before the January 6th Congressional Committee. Do you know how it feels to have the president of the United States to target you. The Georgia Secretary of State and longtime Trump attorney Rudy Giuliani were among 75 witnesses who testified before the grand jury during the seven month long investigation. Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis is still considering whether she will seek indictments. The district attorney and her team are truly uh, looking under every stone. And Gwen Keys Fleming is a former county district attorney in Georgia. She says Willis could be looking at a variety of charges, potentially even for former President Trump, who has repeatedly denied any wrongdoing. There is a substantial likelihood of some uh, real criminal or possible criminal liability here. A regular grand jury could then issue indictments in the coming weeks or months. Nicole D'Antonio, CBS News, The White House. Well, today we are taking a look at the contributions of black Americans in honor of Black History Month. Coming up in the next five minutes, the Verify team breaks down a social media claim about the first history of the first premier paramedics in America. Nathan. Showers and storms have exited Arkansas. Now the cooler temperatures are building their way in here from the northwest. I'll let you know how long they'll stick around coming up.